In this video, I'm going to take you through my pyramid of success as far as uh, training is concerned. This is really my, uh, the pyramid of progress and uh, priorities. And I train in three, three phases, really. Uh, for maximum benefit, you should probably train in three phases. At least I'd recommend it. Uh, isolation, combination, then verification. And verification split into two parts, and we'll get into that. So the first things first is this pyramid is representing uh, priorities that you should have. And starting with the bottom, this is the one that you need to really start with. And each one of these can be trained in isolation. So visual. So visual is uh, not only getting positive identification of the target, because without sight, we don't know that we have something to shoot at, and we don't know where it is, and you know, we can't even visually reference our firearm for, you know, really anything. We, this is kind of part where we have to react and, you know, our situational awareness and everything else. This really does come first. So, you need to be able to confirm that there's a target, even in the low light. You can't just silhouette. You can't. You need to positively identify that. And then... You need to reference your sights through superimposing, not staring at your sights, or even one of your sights. And you don't stare at the front sight to verify that it's on. You superimpose it. You stare at the, the jerk who's coming towards you, and you get that Casper sight. So, it should be hazy, but enough for you to see that it's aligned. So, uh, with that said, next thing is grip. You need to be gripping the firearm competently, whether it's a pistol or a long gun, you need to be able to grip it in a manner that you're actually ready to handle the recoil continuously because realistically speaking, there's no market for a 10 yard sniper who shoots one, every, one round every 10 seconds. There isn't. Uh, that just ain't really how it works unless you are the criminal and you're sniping people. So uh, yeah, for grip, you need to be gripping the gun uh, pretty rough. You need to be pretty rough in order to get maximum control. And uh, you can drill that, all right? Trigger, you need to be able to pull the trigger without moving the gun while gripping it pretty much as hard as you can. And a lot of people say, well, you can't do that with this hand. Really? That's funny. Because uh, uh, there's a lot of people that prove them wrong. There's no such thing as a 60-40 or whatever percentages for two-handed shooting. How are you going to get 60-40 when you're shooting one-handed? Okay? Don't get stuck on stupid. So as far as trigger drills go, here's a simple one. If you don't have a double-action pistol or you don't want to buy, like, a Sky and just, like, break their firing pin by using their uh, double-action only uh, trigger in order to get better at pulling the trigger without moving the gun, then get, like, one of your grippers... Uh, clamp it like this, keep your trigger finger straight, completely straight, and then point in. And use the top here like it's a line sight, and just point in. And then set like a 10 second timer on the dry fire part timer, and then go boop, 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 boop. And try to go as far out as possible, but try to uh, touch that pad as many times as you can. That's the most basic way to pull the trigger without moving the gun and get your, uh, get your hand used to not only gripping the gun hard, but being able to pull the trigger in isolation because we like to do things in combination. Typically, we'll get some kind of sympathetic grip which will knock it off. It's not, it has nothing to do with like flinching, pulling, and everything else. It has to do with tendons and stuff like that, muscular control. And without practicing that, and you're just going to the range and expecting that you'll like, it's anticipation and all this other stuff, it might be some anticipation, but it's also a lack of competency as far as like understanding your anatomical functions. So, yeah, you need to learn, you need to get your body used to working in isolation on some of these things. It's an unnatural movement. It's an unnatural thing that we are doing. Uh, so, we need to do that unnatural thing often in order to train our body to do that functionally. So, anyways... Once you've mastered this, now you've got to apply this. And then, then we get into movements. Now this could be anywhere from just moving tactically throughout a room, like in CQB, like clearing your home. This could be doing like 
break contact drills or whatever, small unit tactics or whatever, those kinds of individual movement techniques, it could be that. But again, just like all of these, in order to get good at something, especially something that you don't use when you're sitting at a computer desk playing Call of Duty, um, you need to do that thing often. And you need to get good at it We're using cover, working with cover and concealment, stacking trees and stuff like that in rural environments, or uh, working in and around a vehicle, VOPs. So, uh, next is manipulations. I mean, if you cannot deliver those rounds where they're supposed to go, what's the point in getting good at manipulations? So you can reload your blanks faster, because your, your rounds might as well be blanks, until, of course, you get to be prosecuted for all of your stray rounds, but um, manipulations, anything where it's like present, presenting a firearm or manipulating it in any way, getting in and out of the holster or whatever, uh, reloads, malfunctions, draws, presentations, you know, whatever. That can also go to manipulating instruments like lights and lasers and stuff like that. And so, uh, and also communications with the, the firearm as well. Uh, so if you are a, a security guard or something like that, or if you're in law enforcement, you need to be able to operate the radio while actually using the firearm, or at least being able to um, being able to use the firearm if the situation arose. So the last thing is tactics. So being able to perform these in in an actual plan, in a tactical plan, and or in a low light setting, and actually being able to plan on the spot, and also planning. PLNG, that's planning. So being able to plan is not just being able to plan how to fight. Uh, it's also planning how to train these in isolation. That's why I box them up. There's a lot more that goes into this and things that I like to train in isolation. But the next step is combining a few of these things. Like I might want to do manipulations while working on my ability to uh, pull the trigger without moving the gun. So uh, once I have finished a reload or uh, completed a malfunction or drew the pistol, I might want to draw while moving to cover and then pull the trigger without moving the gun and then get, you know, to cover again or uh, if I wasn't able to get there in the first place. So working things in combination and that's really a big step. And then we have the two-step verification process. Now the first step of that verification process is actually laser trainers like the G-Sight ELMS. Uh, so that thing is actually pretty sweet um, and it comes in a lot of different calibers. They're trying to come out with a, a 223 last time I talked to them so you know that should be pretty exciting but they also they do have uh, shotgun lasers and they are pretty well uh, pretty well aligned to at least uh, my shotguns. Uh, so I work in combination and I do my first set of verification with a laser to make sure if I think that my sights aren't moving, that laser is going to show me that I've got some movement to worry about. So uh, that's uh, my first set of verification because instead of going to the range and being confused why I'm dropping shots or uh, having anticipation or I'm actually having more sympathetic movement than I thought because I wasn't actually training on the trigger, as much as I thought I was, or I spent too much time away, then that first step of verification will actually save me a good amount of money, especially with how ammo is at this point in time. We don't really want to go to the range and waste our time uh, trying to actually verify these skills. And then when you do code to the range after you've verified with a laser that you're good to go, um, then you go to the range and you just confirm. And then you can spend a little bit of time there, like refining things or whatever. Like if you want to get uh, do some target transitions, like uh, like a one to five um, course of fire, or whatever. It's not a drill. A drill is something you do over and over and over again until it becomes second nature. You don't want to practice a one to five drill. It's a one to five course of fire to see where you're at, your ability to transition targets, but also be able to discriminate how many rounds you give them, right? So a one to five or something like that, or just like bouncing back and forth with progressive uh, uh, round counts and stuff like that. So one, two, three, four, five, and, you know, so on until the mag's empty. So that's my three-step process using my pyramid of priorities. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. It get, it, I could get I could get into the weeds with this stuff because this is what I've actually spent years trying to develop, and uh, I think I actually. 
I found something that works uh, pretty well, and I've actually integrated some people into this. Uh, so it's, it's worked out for them pretty well, too. So uh, anyways, I'll talk to you guys about like a, a training development for somebody who's uh, completely new, like sometime in the future, like how to get them to be proficient in very little time. Uh, so anyways, let's practice and practice in a way that will actually set us up for success because you should not need a warm-up going to the range. You're not going to get a warm-up when you actually have to defend your life. You should not need a warm-up going to the gym because when you actually need that fitness in order to save your life, um, you're not going to get a warm-up. All right. So uh, with that said, uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and you guys have a good one.